Can this derivatives bubble wipe out the wealth of an entire nation? What are derivatives and how can you prepare? The dictionary says derivatives are an arrangement or instrument such as a future option or warrant whose value derives from and is dependent on the value of an underlying asset. Now, in plain English, derivatives are, in some situations, nothing more than legalized gambling, sometimes gambling with your grandmother's pension fund. Now, there are some very legitimate uses for derivatives that are helpful to the economy. Derivatives originally were created to mitigate risk for farmers who might have a bad growing season. Now, since that time, there have been some very risky and dangerous uses for derivatives that can create billions out of thin air. Now, it's your call what you think Wall Street is most involved in. Warren Buffett said many years ago, derivatives are financial weapons of mass destruction carrying dangers that, while now latent, are potentially lethal. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but he still uses them. He's made billions from them, but he fully understands the potential disaster they can cause. Now, for any of you that are watching that have a deeper understanding of derivatives, yes, a blanket statement saying derivatives are all bad is disingenuous, but being overly technical isn't going to help most people understand the risks we are facing today. So an overly simplistic view of the problem with derivatives is this. You and I meet on the street and I say, you know, I bet that my neighbor Mr. Johnson is going to default on his mortgage. You say, you know what? Johnson owns a Bentley. He's rich. I'm going to take that bet. So you bet he'll pay his mortgage. I bet he defaults. Now, we don't even have to use our own money. We only need to put in about 2 to 10% of our total bet. And we tell each other we're good for the rest of the money. Now, picture all the neighbors betting on whether Mrs. Jones' apple tree business is going to yield fruit, Mr. Davis's hardware store down the street is going to go under, and so on and so forth. Now, our bets are not really tied to the value of anything. We're just tying it to whether it's going to rise or fall. Now, everybody makes a ton of money from this, until Mr. Johnson actually loses his house, Mr. Davis's hardware store goes under, and Mrs. Jones' apple trees all perish from drought. Now, all of a sudden, these bets come due, and everyone realizes at once nobody actually has any money to cover these bets because you've only put in 2 to 10% of the bet. Now, deep down inside, we probably didn't care because the taxpayer, and that's you, is probably going to bail us out anyway. Now, if you're a U.S. taxpayer, you already owe right now about $190,000 on your share of the U.S. national debt alone, which is about $23 trillion. Now, if you think $23 trillion is a lot of money, the derivatives market, some people suggest, is as high as $1.4 quadrillion. Dollars. That's actually 10 times the size of the entire global economy combined. And that's fine, as long as the system keeps working as it should. But what happens if something goes wrong? Back in 2008, the collapse, most people think that was a housing bubble. Now, the reality is nobody actually knows what exactly caused the crisis. But ask yourself this. What do you think subprime mortgage-backed securities are? You probably heard of that spoken of quite frequently. They are derivatives, okay? So the bank lends money to a home buyer. The bank sells the mortgage to Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae sells that mortgage in secondary markets. The hedge fund splits up that mortgage-backed security into higher and lower risk portions and sells it. So you get higher interest if you bet on riskier mortgages or parts of mortgages that are further down the mortgage term. Now, this is all fun until the day people can't pay their mortgages. Then we have the collapse where the taxpayer, and that's you, bail out the big banks as a reward for these enormous risks and bets that they took that made them billions because of that heavy risk. Now, I guess Really, it's not that risky, though, when you know someone else is going to bail you out. But surely, after this horrible collapse, people losing their houses, just complete economic destruction. They fixed everything, right, and put in some regulations. Absolutely not. Reforms were attempted by Obama back then 
The banks fought against this tooth and nail and they basically won. Not only did the CEOs responsible for all this stuff not go to jail, the industry sued anyone who was trying to regulate them. They lobbied, they, they used every trick at their disposal to circumvent these regulations, to get back to these boom days. And today, nothing has changed. Arguably, it is worse. Now, the top six banks, remember those that were too big to fail? They now account for two thirds of the entire banking industry. Adjustable rate mortgages, probably heard a lot, a lot of that back in 2008. It was another big contributor to the collapse. They're now just as popular as they were back in 2008. Rogue trading, huge problem in 2008. It's still going on and banks are losing billions on risky derivative bets that management apparently doesn't even know is going on. Last year, Deutsche Bank, they laid off 18,000 people. They had an estimated $49 trillion in exposures to derivatives. Now, by the way, JP Morgan, 48 trillion in derivatives. Citigroup, 47 trillion. Goldman Sachs, 42 trillion. Now, you might not have heard of Deutsche Bank, but you should know that if this bank fails, and it is struggling right now, laying off tens of thousands of people, doing major restructuring. Part of that restructuring is trying to sell off some of these useless, toxic derivatives that nobody wants. Now, if it fails, the interconnectedness between all global banks will quite possibly set a domino effect throughout the entire world. Now, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, says Deutsche Bank poses a greater threat to global financial stability than any other bank. And they said this back when Deutsche Bank was in much better financial shape. So nobody really knows what's going to start the next recession, but derivatives could be a big part of the problem. The good news is that if you're prepared, recessions are fantastic opportunities. We just uploaded a video on recession-proof businesses and why starting a business in a recession is actually a great time to do so. That link is up above. Gold and precious metals also can be a wise investment. You can watch that video by clicking down below. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.